This is a video that I've debated heavily on making, because while I was skimming through the comments of my Undertale military ranking video, I noticed a decent number of you guys arguing about what would happen if the monsters and humans had a rematch. Now, I know that no matter what, somebody's gonna get pissed, but you know what? I think that it's a neat idea and deserves a video of its own. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be analyzing who would win if the humans and monsters ever decide to have a rematch. Now, I'm not a military expert, so I don't know too much, but I'll honestly just try my best. Anyways, I'll mainly be going into what either side has at their disposal, and if I miss anything, please tell me in the comment section below. In this hypothetical scenario, the humans sacrifice 7 people to destroy the barrier and launch an assault on the underground. The monsters have heard about this assault and are given a week to prepare. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. To start us off, let's begin with the humans. Now, in order to find out what the humans have in terms of weaponry and technology, we need to figure out what year Undertale takes place in. From the start of Undertale, it's established that the game takes place at the very least in 2010. But since the human in the opening scene is Kara, and it was established that during Kara's life, humans used bows and arrows, it could very well be 2000 BC instead of AD. Which would make sense since if it was 2010 AD, that means by the time you free everyone from the underground, the world would probably be all futuristic, which it really isn't. I think the only thing from my knowledge that would give a somewhat solid date to the year Frisk's journey takes place in is the car Papyrus drives at the end of the True Pacifist run. I looked it up and according to some people online, the car looks to be a red 2009 Mazda MX-5. Given the humans of Undertale, the technological capabilities found during 2009. Now, this is really just speculation, so just take it with a grain of salt, but I'll be given humanity, weaponry, and military strength at that time. Anyways, like I said earlier, I'm no military expert, but I do know that the humans have an access to a large assortment of guns, explosives, protection, and a lot more. Now, I feel like the humans are only going to be able to traverse the underground on foot or with very small vehicles, since both methods of getting into the underground, Mount Ebbet and the Barrier, have decently small access points that don't leave much room for anything large like a tank or helicopter getting through, so the humans are just getting infantry. Now, as for the number of soldiers, I don't want to be biased this early on, but the humans completely decimate in terms of numbers. In 2009, the US alone has over 550,000 soldiers in the army alone, and I was initially going to pull the entire world's military forces together for this one. Not only do the humans have the monsters beat in number of combatants, but they're also way stronger than the monsters in terms of power. It's quite common knowledge that one human soul is equal in strength to the entire monster population's souls in the underground, but also let me point out that a young child with various ridiculous weapons was able to not only destroy a decent amount of the monsters all by themselves, but was also able to take out monster kind's strongest combatants. But if their numbers, power difference, and military strategy isn't enough, let me remind you of another interesting power all humans naturally have in Undertale. Determination, aka their I lived bitch. It was already established that the most determined person in the underground can come back from the dead and rewind time, seen through the implications that the other human children who fell into the underground could do that too. Now, if human children possess more determination than anyone in the underground, imagine hundreds of thousands of trained human soldiers in the underground. Even if the monsters somehow wipe out the human forces, one of those guys can just edge a tomorrow it and go back in time and prevent the same thing from happening again. Is that reference to olds? I don't know, I just feel like not many of you guys would get that one. Oh well. Anyways, it seems like the humans have a massive advantage against the monsters, but all hope is not lost. Let's go over to the monster side and see what they got. Now, although the monsters are a lot less trained and less physically powerful, they still have some advantages. One of these things is that they have the home turf advantage. They know everything that their world has to offer and could set up traps to deter the human soldiers from gaining ground in the underground. That's another thing, monsters are well known for their love of traps and puzzles, and although some of these can be harmless, there are some decently lethal ones. Papyrus' Gauntlet of Death was, although never used, extremely terrifying. Hotland has a ton of lasers that can do some damage, and even Metaton has a large assortment of bombs that take the form of everyday objects. Actually, the monsters surprisingly seem a lot more technologically advanced than the humans. They got lasers, murder robots, tile puzzles, and a lot more stuff that can pose a threat to invaders. 
Now, like I said earlier, the average monster is gonna get completely decimated by the average human. Hell, even the strong monsters might not stand a chance. Undyne could probably take out a few guys on her own due to her latent determination, but she got taken out by a notebook. How do you think she'll fare against bullets? Sans will get tired way too fast due to a constant stream of gunfire, Papyrus, the rest of the Royal Guard and Toriel won't be much help unless they can get the jump on their enemies, and hell, even Metaton, despite being impervious to damage in his base form, still might not be much help. Metaton was impervious to attacks from notebooks, toy daggers, and sticks. I don't know if he could take on bullets or even a rocket launcher. His Neo form, despite never being seen, was said to be a powerhouse, so maybe if Metaton got the jump on invading humans, he could do something. But knowing how much Metaton likes to showboat and have the spotlight, that possibility is unlikely. The only person the monsters really have on their team that can cause some real problems is Alphys, surprisingly. Or rather, what Alphys brings to the table. As you all know, Alphys has a little secret in her lab. That secret being a horde of unkillable abominations. Yep. The amalgamates can't be killed due to their determination overload, and most of them are really aggressive, meaning they can cause some real havoc to the human forces. Also, Alphys has the chance to do something really devious, and make the citizens of the underground into these large, unkillable abominations in order to give the monsters a fighting chance. Wow, thinking about it like that is actually really messed up. Anyways, it seems like the humans have a lot more of an advantage than the monsters do. And yes, while that is true, there's one thing that the monsters have that trumps anything the humans can throw out. A secret weapon of sorts. Well, actually, six secret weapons. That's right, the six human souls can turn the tide in the monsters favor massively. If Asgore were to hear word of the humans' invasion and absorb the six human souls, there wouldn't be anyone around who could stop him. Remember when Flowey got access to the six human souls? He was able to override the time manipulation powers of the determination soul, and the only reason he doesn't permanently kill you is because Flowey's a sadistic little freak and wanted to watch you die a million times. Asgore hates killing, but will do it if he needs to, resulting in a much more efficient and deadly usage of the souls. Hell, Asgore can even use the souls to absorb the entirety of the underground population souls and then decimate the human forces even more. Now, this all sounds good, but there is one thing that makes this power not an 100% win for the monsters. It's the fact that Frisk was able to refuse their soul even after death. Despite Azrael being able to return everything to zero and quite literally having infinite power, Frisk still got back up after death. Now, it could be that Frisk is an anomaly, or it shows how determination trumps all other power in the Undertale universe, but we really can't know for sure. Now, do I have a clear answer on who would win if the humans and monsters fought again? No. We have no idea if a human soldier carries the determination to stop god-level powers. In fact, the humans could just flat out nuke the monsters if they wanted to. So much could happen. But what do you think? If I had to pick a side, I would be part of Team Monster, but let me know in the comments below. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.